This conference will now be recorded. Thank you so much, everyone, for coming this evening. Um, I'm excited for this evening's event, but before we get started, I do want to let everyone know about some programs that are coming up. Uh, on uh, we are coming up is our, our annual amateur phot photography contest, and I'm putting the link in the chat box so you can take a look and see uh, some more information that is available about the the photography contest it is starting on september 6th that you can turn in your uh, entries and you can do that at your local branch and they will go through a judging process uh, and then they will be the three finals will three final pictures will be picked out from uh, judges at our west windsor branch they have people from the west windsor arts council who will be serving as judges this year for the final winners so i encourage you to take a look and see what's going on and how you can submit your photos I also want to let you know that this is just one of many events that we have. Um, there's, I'm putting a link to our calendar in the chat so you can see upcoming events uh, along with other virtual events that we have. Uh, we have uh, many things happening in the branches, whether it's book discussions or crafts or current event discussions. Uh, I encourage you to take a look at our calendar and see those events that are happening either in the branches or that are upcoming virtually. So let's go ahead and get started for this evening. Again, as Laura mentioned in, begin in the beginning, if you do have questions, please feel free to enter them into the chat box, which is the speech bubble you'll see in the right-hand side of your corner. And Mike and I will take a look at those and make sure that we answer um, as many as we can in the time allotted. We do want to be respectful of everybody's time this evening. Uh, tonight's presenter is Mike D. Scara, who is of the Computer Training Service. He's been providing computer instruction for groups large and small across New Jersey since 1997. And I'm looking forward to the talk this evening. And Mike, I'm going to pass it off to you. Thank you. Thank you so much for that nice introduction. Very kind. Hi, everybody. Thanks for coming tonight. Um, I'm going to jump right in. Um, one of the concerns that people have is money. No surprise. <clears throat> And the rationale for these tools is it's better than cash 99% of the time because it allows you to pay someone or something without revealing either without having cash or frankly, without revealing uh, your credit card. So <clears throat> a lot of times um, you give your credit card to someone, they walk away, they swipe it through, whatever. And yes, I purposely blurred the information um, so it's not your camera. but you don't want to necessarily hand your credit card over to somebody. Um, I don't know about you, but I've actually had the unfortunate incident where someone wrote down the number and they flip it over and they wrote down the security number and they bought a whole bunch of things and they went on a nice shopping spree without me, which was kind of annoying. So the reason for these tools is you don't have to use cash and it's like using a credit card, but you don't have to give someone your credit card. Now, the downside is that you do have to use the same tool as the other person to complete a transaction. So if you're using American dollars and the other person can use American dollars, but if the other person is using the Euro, you probably have to use the Euro. And if you're using a rupee, you would have to use rupees, at least without transaction issues. So that's sort of the same thing when you use one of these cash apps. That's sort of the disadvantage. So if the other person has Venmo, you have to use Venmo to interact with them. Or they use the cash app, you have to use the cash app, or PayPal and PayPal. It's much easier to use the same tool as the other person. Or in fact, it's really hard to use it without using the same tool. And because of that, it is very likely that you are going to have to use many of these. So here's my <clears throat> little part on my cell phone that I have Venmo and PayPal and the Cash App along with my other financial. And yes, I do spend an inordinate amount of mo money at Duncan also, and that's why it's in the fin financial group. But that's my point, that most people with whom I deal use Venmo or PayPal or Cash App. So I feel like I have to have each one. Now, 
making one, making an account isn't especially difficult. You know, it, this is an example of Cash App. And what you do essentially is you tie your debit card or a bank to the Cash App. So it's not based on nothing, it's based on something. So I put in my information, etc. And then, of course, I pick a username. So in this case, it's dollar sign Mike D. Scara, because that's my name. <clears throat> and then they will send you a security code and a pin to make sure that it's really you most of the time. So I'm going to jump out of my presentation real quick and actually do it on the live side. Oh, so here I am. I'm actually in PayPal for a moment. So it doesn't, so I'm going to log out. <clears throat> So I will, whoop, I will hit log in. Whoop, let me go back one. So I'm going to log in. And here's my email address. It's tied. And on my particular case, it's already stored on my machine, which is great. But, and this is something about which I absolutely recommend you do, is you do something called two-step verification, sometimes called multi-factor authentication. In my case, the PayPal is also sending me a text message to my cell phone. So even if someone were to know what my account information was, they would still have to get a text to my cell phone to get in. And this particular item is tied to my bank account. And as you can see, I've used PayPal for several different things. I bought my wife flowers. Her birthday is on Friday. So I had to make sure I got flowers. I, I bought airline tickets through PayPal. Um, I, I purchased other things. But then I also sent money to a friend. Uh, we were having a 4th um, a of July party, Independence Day party. And he was very kind to go get most of the supplies for the party. So I did, in fact, uh, reimburse him. So as you can see, in this particular case, I'm using PayPal for both professional, you know, company transactions or personal transactions. Now, in this particular case, I don't know if you can tell, but this is the same person, Bill Mark and Bill Mark. And the reason why I sent him a single dollar first is his name is reasonably common. Bill Marx is not Bill Mark is not that uncommon of a name. So to protect myself and to make sure that he was the person who was getting the money, I sent him a single dollar and I called him up and I said, "Hey Bill, did you get the money?" and he said, "Yes." So then I sent him the other $209. Now, you can probably see here that my current PayPal balance is zero because I recently took the money that was in my PayPal and just pushed it to my bank account. Why not? And that's why there's a negative $79 transaction uh, because I had $79 in my PayPal and I just simply transferred it to my TD Bank and that way my account here is zero. On the other hand, um, oops, not that one, uh, my Venmo account, I am, <clears throat> I for, for reasons I don't really remember, I still have $170 sitting in my Venmo account, which is kind of not smart on my account because, first of all, I had forgotten it was there. And secondly, now Venmo like has my money that they could play with. So I could really just transfer that to whatever. On the other hand, I'm going to probably use it eventually, so I might as well just leave it there. It's not like I'm getting tremendous amounts of interest in my bank account. In fact, I'm getting zero. The other sort of interesting thing about Venmo is, frankly, it's sort of like social media where you can see who's paying what. So I can see Lou paid his sister. It says laptop. I don't know what that means. And uh, Kian is my son's new roommate. Um, they actually went to high school together, and now they're roommates. So I'm assuming he paid him for pizza and ice cream. So Venmo sort of has this <clears throat> cute little way to keep track. So earlier today, um, my son and I were talking, 
and he informed me he is going to go see my favorite band. Um, he lives down in Florida right now. He's going to school in Florida. And there is an Iron Maiden concert in Tampa that he's going to. So uh, trying to be as literature oriented as possible, for those of you who like the library, um, <clears throat> Iron Maiden did a song uh, about the, the poem, Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner. And uh, I told him I would send him additional money if he could name the name of the song very quickly. And he did get back to me in a text. And he said, uh, it is in fact the Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner. I said, nice, I'll send more money during class. So now I owe him 50 bucks. What, the, what a, a great father I am. So, and the reason why I bring it up is this technique, whether it's pay or request money, is pretty identical regardless of which of these tools you use. So I'm going to say, I'm going to hit this button here, pay a request, and it's going to ask me, <clears throat> am I paying or am I requesting? So I am paying $50. And this is where you need to know the other person's account. So in this particular case, I know he's at Matt Scarra. There he is. And frankly, what I did is I confirmed them that with him in a text. Hey, Matt, what's your, men what's your Venmo? Matt Scarra. And I'm going to say, you got the answer. Well, Right. So I am going to pay, and this is important, make sure you press the right button. I'm going to pay him 50 bucks. And it's deducting the $50 from my Venmo balance, or I could pick right from my TD Bank if I wanted to. But I'm just going to use my Venmo balance, pay Matt Scarra. $50. And I then get a notification saying I paid him $50. And now, of course, my balance is $120. So that's sort of the live side of how it actually use, you can use it to pay someone. You can do the very same thing if you provide a service for someone, whether you're doing it professionally or in Bill's case, he went and got the Independence Day supplies. So instead of me just paying him, he actually could type a request. It's essentially the same thing, but in this case, you're asking for money. So maybe I'll ask for $5 back. And I'll say, now the likelihood of me getting money back from my son is essentially zero. I'm okay with it. He's my boy. What would I, why would I ask him for money? Or something to that effect. Then I say request. Now, I want to be clear. They don't have to pay you. They can, you're asking for it, but there's no mechanism that forces them to pay you. So I got a question in the chat that says, what's the advantage of having money taken from my checking account or having money in my Venmo account? There isn't one. The, <clears throat> okay, let me be clear. In my instance, it doesn't matter. The reason is I don't use Venmo as a slush fund. I don't hide anything from anybody. So anyone in my family have a, has a, have, my wife has access to this account. So it's not like it's a big deal. I'll talk about charges in a second. What some people I do, and I know they do this, is they keep a little slush fund in their PayPal, Venmo, Cash App, whatever it is. And it's sort of a hidden account. So for things you want your partner to know about, you might take it from your checking account. If it's transactions you don't know I want your partner to know about, you could take it directly from Venmo if you had Venmo in the account. Now, one of the questions I got is, how does Zelle differ from the other tools apps you're discussing? Again, I wanna be clear. Essentially, 
they don't. All of these tools work almost in the exact same way. It's because the reason why you want one versus another versus another is, as I mentioned before, some people use American dollars, some people use rupees, some people use euros in the world. So you need to have the same tool as the other person. That way you ensure that they're going to get it. So you might ask, how do these tools make any money on these transactions? Well, what they're starting to do now is charge transaction fees for businesses. So if you're saying to someone, you know, I'm a contractor and uh, you can pay me through Venmo or pay me through Zelle or Cash App, um, they're starting to try to charge a convenience fee there. The other way they're making money, and this is one of the questions in the chat, is do these organizations charge a fee when you pay or withdraw money? And the answer is generally, if you want the money fast, they will pay, they will charge you a premium. Uh, it's several percent to get the money out early or quickly. If you can wait the two or three days, there's no transaction fee. So that's the way generally that they make their money. Um, so the question is how do one of the one of the questions I just got in the chat was, how do you choose your account name? It's just how did you know my question to that person back is, how did you pick your email address? You just kind of pick something and if it was available, you got it. If it wasn't available, you had to pick something else entirely. So there's no real way to say, oh, I'm going to get X or Y. Now, another uh, question I received in the chat was, are these apps secure? Well, they're as secure as any other on online transaction. So this is why I kind of recommended before, ensure that you have multi-factor or sometimes it's called two-step verification turned on. So what I do is I ensure that every one of these tools has multi-factor authentication. So I get a text as well as having my username and password. So in this way, I can ensure that um, my, I'm as secure as I can be. <clears throat> now, one of the items is, you know, a lot of banks actually use Zelle as their way to do person-to-person -person transactions. And again, it's sort of the exact same thing as any one of these other cash apps. You can tie it directly to your bank, or you can direct it to uh, a credit card, or some other hard way of, of doing that. So again, they all sort of work in the same way. But I do recommend two-step verification to be as secure as possible all the time. So in this particular case, you ask, someone asked about how do you get a, how do you get your name? For reasons I still don't understand, in Cash App, all of the names start with a dollar sign. In Venmo, the names start with an at symbol. So I was actually uh, collecting money for an event I was doing. Uh, this is obviously back during pandemic times. I ran a 50 kilometer race in my own backyard. The idea was to show that you could still be active in your backyard. So what I did is in PayPal, I made a little URL that a person could more easily pay me. Um, so some of them you can do that, some of them you can't. They all have their little foibles, but as you can see in Cash App, my brother, that's my brother up there, Charles Scara is Cash App with a dollar sign, no space. And in Venmo, he's at Charles dash Carey, that's my sister-in-law, dash Scara. So I wanna be clear that it's important for you to be sure what account is the one with which you're doing business. Because again, I'm gonna make it up, but if your name is John Smith, there's probably a lot of John Smiths out there. So you want to ensure that the account with which you are working is in fact the account with which you want to work. 
So I usually send um, an email address, like an email or a, hey, did you get it? Did you make sure? Is everything okay? I almost always send a dollar. That's the question in the, in the chat. Uh, so if you're asking someone to send you money, do you always tell them to send you a dollar for verification? I do. Again, it's just another way to me to be sure that I'm dealing with the right person, they're dealing with the right person, because if I'm sending a couple hundred dollars, I want to make sure it's going to the right person. So that's a, that's essentially my spiel. You can, you know, it, they're all they're all close, they're all similar to each other. So again, kind of how it works. Um, most of these apps give you a list of people with whom you have done business in the recent past. Uh, some people call them friends, some of them call them transaction associates, etc. So again, if I go back to my PayPal, um, let me get back to my PayPal if I can. Yes, I am doing this live. This is Venmo, this is Venmo. Here it is, PayPal. Oh, they want to sign me out. So right up here, these are the people with whom I did, um, I've done transactions with lately. So um, my, again, my friend Bill, this is a woman I, who I do work for, this is my friend, this is a organization that I work, I do, uh, I do running races for. So Elevated, I had a, I, that's how I bought the shirt. Like they, they wanted you to, pay them for the shirt that you were going to wear. So Elevated happens to use PayPal. Other people happen to use Cash App. Um, so that, I mean, again, they're all quite similar to each other. The key component, of course, being you need to use the one that the other person uses. So there's, you know, kind of how it looks like pay. I kind of did this live already, but this is the presentation part. So these are all the people in uh, Venmo that I have interacted with lately. So essentially what you do, if you've never done work with them before, you type in the name, you hit enter, it's gonna search for that person to ensure that this is the right person. And what many people do is they put a little picture. That's my brother and that's his wife. Um, so that helps you assure. So what I would do on if you're using these tools is put a picture of you in the app to ensure that when people deal with you, it's really you or your company logo or however it is you're going to use this. Um, it doesn't really, I mean, I'm not trying to say only for personal, only for whatever. But what I do suggest, and this is sort of a workaround, and if anybody works for uh, PayPal or Venmo or out there, sorry, this is a workaround. Even if you're using it for business purposes, the note you leave would say something like, lunch or thanks for the supply you know for the party supplies or something more benign so it doesn't look like it's a business transaction because there's millions of transactions happening every day the less likely it is to make your transaction obvious the less likely that someone's actually going to try to charge you an extra fee for a business transaction <clears throat> so again, same kind of thing, how much you want to pay or receive. I kind of did this live already. And some people like to put a little uh, symbol. Uh, I was going to Georgia for a race. So, um, you know, they had little race type images. I don't know. Yes. So. If it's your business and you are requ uh, requesting money from someone, Venmo or PayPal or whatever these apps might do, is they may 
try to charge you an additional business transaction fee. So PayPal has a tendency to charge you more, particularly if it's an eBay transaction. I'm just kind of reading the, the, the questions in the chat. Um, most of these other ones do not. But again, they've been around for a long time. Uh, transaction history. Yeah. So like I said, I like to add more notifications. I put an extra, hey, so I text the person, can you please confirm payment via Venmo? Again, just to be super sure, this doesn't take any extra money. It's just extra safety on my part, maybe because I'm paranoid. So again, Bill said, yes, he did get it. So I was able to send more with confidence. So there's your thing. Receive payments in your business profile that are identified for goods or services 2% plus a dime. So please be aware that they're identified as goods and services. So if you want to avoid that, don't identify the transaction as a good or service. Sending people using a credit card is also a percentage. So if you're going to do that, put money into the account ahead of time. So every one of these sites has caveats, rules, and other ways that they're going to try to make money. So these particular ones I'm showing you are Venmo ones. So that is one of the reasons why you might consider leaving money in your Venmo account, because that way you're not using a secondary or tertiary fund. If the transfer is found to a credit card, will there always be a fee or deducted or is that we receive? Yeah, it's from what you receive. Um, it's you acquiring funds, not the sender paying you. <clears throat> do, 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 do. So when have I used this service? Lots of times, lunch orders, retirement gifts, Oh yeah, when my daughter took the train, we paid her that way. Uh, my niece's flight, um, family. Oh yeah, fa oh that's right. We paid. We I forgot about that. Uh, when my son was moving to Florida, um, our family friend had a pickup truck, and uh, we threw him a couple of bucks. And I didn't have money on me, and I didn't feel it right for him to walk away empty-handed. So uh, I sent him, uh, I think it was $50 through, through Venmo, just so like, you go, oh, what a cheapskate that Mike is. I can't believe he didn't like, you probably wouldn't say that, but you know, I, I use it for lots of reasons. Uh, lunch orders is a biggie, honestly, uh, with my team, when we go out, um, I get everyone's order, I make the order, and then they'll pay me through Venmo and it'll just be kind of yeah, nice and easy. So I, I do use it for all kinds of reasons. So the point is, it's easy collection and distribution of money. Both people have to have the same one. And thereby, you may have to have several to work with all the people with whom you want to work. And in most cases, it's free. You need to ensure that the various rules by which each one plays are the rules by which you follow to ensure that you are not going to run afoul of a myriad of issues because you want to try to avoid using the service and paying extra for it if you don't have to. And again, they all sort of work in the same way. So it doesn't really matter which one is the one you use. So let me get out of this get back to my this account. So like I said, this is my PayPal. This is my Venmo. And you know, what's interesting, I don't know if you guys know this, but PayPal and Venmo are in fact owned by the same company. So 
It's not like you're going to say, I'm taking my business to Venmo. You PayPal people stink. They, they just, it's all the same company. Uh, yeah. Um, so like I said, I always do when it's a, when it's a new person, when it's a person with whom I haven't dealt before, I always send the $1 to ensure that it's the right person. So yeah, thank you for that, putting that in the chat. That was Rob. Thank you, Rob. So here's a complete guide to Venmo fees. So again, they all have their, yes, uh, that's the question is, um, yes, you generally pay a premium for the quick transfer of funds. Um, usually it's free if you do it. I believe it's one to three days is the free. And, but if it's immediate, you pay a percentage. I think it's 5% or 3%, something like that. So I've, I've come to not rely on that for anything other than low stakes transactions. Again, I wouldn't necessarily use this for, you know, important things like the rent. Um, so, uh, Holly, I'm not sure I understand your question. How do you delay payments? Can you expound on that, Holly? Oh, yes. So, you know what? I'll, I'll try to do that now. The question is, like, how do I delay a payment to me? Okay. So, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take my 100. Uh, actually, it's not 170. It's not 170 anymore. This is the old version. Let me uh, let me refresh this page because I'm now down. Okay. Oh, he paid me back. What a nice kid. Man, I love that boy. That's completely unscripted, by the way. I didn't think he was going to pay me back. He he gave me. See see here it works. I asked him for money. Wow. Thanks so much, Matt. I'll call him later. So I gave him fifty dollars right here. And I said, pay me. I requested him to pay me. And look at that, that he did. So I'm going to go, thanks. You can leave little notes, I guess, you know, for each other. That's fine. So I have my $125. Here I go. So I'm going to say transfer money. Boom is then going to ask me how much and there it is is it instant so i'm paying a percentage two dollars and eighteen cents or one to three business days no fee and i'm sending it to the bank account that's behind if you will that's that's the real place in which that money goes and i will say transfer so I am now going to see that money hit my bank account in one to three business days. Frankly, I've never seen it be more than two. It's usually just the one, honestly. Um, so the question is, uh, if you accidentally send money to the wrong person, can you get it back? Um, the, the answer is if they're nice. They don't have to. You could say, hey, I sent it to the wrong person. Could you please send it back to me? Sometimes yes, sometimes no. I mean, what are you going to do? Yes, uh, here we go. Um, so I can go into my settings, and I actually can pull money into it, which is kind of nice. Frankly, I don't generally do that. I generally kind of leave it as my slush account. You know, it's not, it's like it's high stakes money. Um, but you can, you can just put money into it as well. <coughs> Excuse me. Would you address the payment methods as a nonprofit? Oh yeah, sure. Again, um, I, I use this as a nonprofit when I was, I, I used my PayPal, um, I just simply made 
um, what I did actually is I made a, um, what do you call it? Like I made a link. I forgot how to do that exactly. But what you can do is I made a link. Um, in fact, you saw it earlier in my presentation where it was a, a PayPal donations link where people could just donate that way. Let me see if I can find it again. Yeah, here it is. So in PayPal, I made a paypal.me forward slash backyard 50K. Like I said, I was, I was raising money to, uh, frankly, it was to aid local businesses. Um, so I was trying to demonstrate to people um, that you could still be active in your own backyard, even if you couldn't go to your Little League game or, uh, you know, play basketball in the park, because we, we weren't supposed to interact with each other. So, uh, yeah, running 50 kilometers in your own backyard was 750 laps of my own backyard. That was really hard. Um, so, so the question I got in the chat was, why do you need to keep money in Venmo? Can it not be taken directly from your account like PayPal? It can as I mentioned, in this particular case, I simply, <coughs> frankly, in this particular case, I didn't remember if someone had paid me. Uh, if I remember correctly, it took her a while to pay me for the service, and I didn't even check on it. I just checked on it yesterday to see that it was there. Um, what I actually, um, you don't have to keep a balance in Venmo. What I, what, what I know people do is they leave money there that their partner, someone else in their life can't see it or doesn't know it's there or whatever. It's sort of like their private little slush fund. So you, um, so you don't, like the other person doesn't know it's there. So that's why I know a lot of people leave money in Venmo so you don't have to do it. Oh, so the question is, um, you don't like the social media aspect. You can turn that off. You can make it so you don't have to let the world see your transactions. I know that is a feature. Uh, frankly, I, on a personal note, I don't care. Frankly, um, that's kind of one of the reasons why Venmo is kind of more popular these days because there's that social media aspect. You, you can, I'm pretty sure you can turn that off. I haven't actually tried to do that myself. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's in the settings. Anyway, so, I mean, like I said, there's lots of reasons why you might want to use it. So here's, here's your button here for fundraiser. Someone asked me about, about fundraising. So here's my PayPal, here's fundraising. If I could actually get to it, even better. Maybe I have to refresh the page. Here we go, start a fundraiser. If I can raise money for a charity, you raise money for yourself, someone else or a group. So I did that. Who can see it? Only people with the link. So PayPal has it kind of already built in as a fundraiser. And uh, I don't think I'd ever raise $20,000 for anything I'd ever do, but you know, maybe some people do do that. So. Um, what I did at the time was I made this and then I sent it to the people I thought would be potential contributors to that backyard 50K. So I thought that was, yeah, so like I said, I, the, you can send them the link or you can make a QR code based on the link. So there's lots of different ways to uh, distribute. Again, this was a fundraiser just for me. You know, I said it was my it was my charity, frankly. Um, honestly, I don't know that you can't use Venmo as a nonprofit. You may very well be right. I've never tried to use it in that way, so I don't want to give you bad information. Uh, what I can do is research that and have the library get back to you on it, frankly. Um, but I don't I don't want to say X or Y 100% for sure. Yeah, happy to help. That's why I'm here. So that is the general spiel on using these various tools. Again, they're all sort of the same. The key component is really knowing which is the one as the person that, sorry, 
that you're the that you're going to use it with more than anything else. So I know I kind of asked, I answered most of the questions in the chat, but this is sort of your opportunity that if I didn't say something or you got a question that no one else brought up yet, this your this is your opportunity to kind of bring it in. There's uh, 68 of you still out there, so don't be shy. No one's going to uh, no one's going to say anything. Laura, you got you guys still out there? Hi, Mike. Yeah, I'm here. I'm coming back on. I was just going to say that um, I you I mean you addressed all the questions as you were talking. It just kind of happened organically with you. Yeah, your, that's generally um, how we like to do it. One thing I did want, I, I, I'm just sharing this anecdote from today is that we had a consult with um, someone and it was the first time I ever Venmoed her. I'd never Venmoed her before. And it actually asked me to confirm it was her by entering the last four digits of her phone number. So she was there. I mean, so, you know, I, either I had the phone number in my cell phone with her number, or I could just ask her what are the last four digits of your phone number. And that was a way to confirm payment as well. Okay. Uh, Lois has a question. I personally have never received a 1099 from any of these uh, interactions because I don't use it, you know, for business purposes, frankly. Um, Linda asks, uh, which is the most popular one? Um, today, it seems like it's Venmo. Tomorrow, it could be Cash App. Uh, PayPal sort of the grand old lady, to use a, maybe an archaic term. Again, PayPal and eBay were tied together for the longest time. And since so many people were on eBay, uh, they're now no longer tied together. But, um, you know, sort of here today, gone tomorrow. The only thing I can tell you is check with the other person with whom you want to interact and use what they use. Frankly, I use three with some regularity. I don't know. That's not really a good answer, Linda. I'm sorry. But that's about the best answer I can give. But if there is a takeaway, it is it depends on the vendor or the person who you are working with and what they are using. That's that's yeah. where it comes from. Yeah. Oh. Which payment system is better? I, in my experience, they're all pretty much the same. The thing you want to look out for is what are the fee? What's the fee schedule? So, you know, that's, that's the general, that's the general gist. Just, again, what I generally do is I make it so they're not identified as business transactions. So when I bought that shirt off of Elevated, I just said, thanks. I didn't say shirt for race to try to avoid them, you know, doing their thing. Well, and I hope- Oh, Go how ahead. do you, tra when someone asks, oh. um, how do you transfer money to your own Venmo account? Okay, um, I'm going to see that. I know there's a way in the settings to do that. Again, to be honest with you, I generally just leave money in there. Oh, here we go. Uh, someone asked me about tax documents. Here's where you get your tax documents, that kind of thing. Uh, payment methods. So this is where you tie in your, you know, I use my TD bank account. So I know there is a way to put money in here. Again, I don't generally do that. I just generally leave the money in here. I'm, I will get the specific way to do it for each of these three and get, you know, get instructions to you because I want to make sure that I give you the right information because what they do in Venmo is not going to be the same in PayPal, which is not going to be the same in Cash App, et cetera. So I will be sure I get you that information correctly. You're welcome. All right, friends. Well, if there's nothing else, I appreciate your coming today. Oh, well, which was for scams. <laughs> I, Alois, I don't know. Um, that's not something with which I have much experience. I don't engage in scams, so I, I can't tell you. Um, what I can tell you is the anatomy of a scam essentially works that people try to hustle you. And I mean, hustle, like do it quickly to make you seem like you're under a lot of pressure that if you don't do it now, something will get turned off or we're going to 
charge you $1,900 for that cell phone. That is never a thing. There is no instance where the power company is going to turn off your power or Amazon will ever notify you that you bought a cell phone because Amazon knows that people buy things. And like I said, you turn on your two-step verification, you, you don't have to worry about that. And no one's ever contacting you to say, you're welcome, everybody, that do it right away or else something bad is going to happen. That's, that's never a thing. So I can't tell you which one's involved in scams more than any other. Oh, I'm glad. I'm glad, Cheryl. That's that's not that's not uh, you're not scared. Thank you. I'm really glad everyone came. Then I'm getting a lot of good feedback. Thank you so much. Makes me feel like I did something good today. <laughs> well, Mike, I do want to thank you. It was very informative. Again, I think it's um, it's easy, and I think there are. I I totally want to second the uh, authentication, the uh, the second authentication, or the, what was it, the other name they call it, multi. Multi-factor authentication, yeah. Multi-factor authentication. A step for yourself, yeah. Yeah, so Someone I said, do. Thank you for the one dollar idea. I do that all the time. When it's a new person, I always send like a dollar. Did Did you get it? Oh yeah, I'm good. Okay, great. Here's the rest. And I want to thank everybody for coming this evening. And of course, I need to thank Laura, who was behind the scenes, making sure everything was running smoothly. And Mike, again, thank you so much for such an informative presentation. My pleasure. I'll see you next time, everybody. Have a great night. Bye right.